Hi, this is Pitluni and in today's episode I will build an even bigger ping pong LED wall. With 1200 pixels it's huge compared to the last one and it's even able to stream from an ESP32 camera or a PC. The last LED wall I built was quite popular and good looking at the Maker Fair in Berlin. So how about quadrupling the pixels and make a huge one for the Maker Fair in Hannover. Since the drilling of the steel plate was so painful I built a hole punch in the last episode and decided to make the new one out of aluminium. To be transportable it will be made out of 4 individual panels with a ton of ping pong balls and LEDs. To power this I got a 70 amp 5 volt power supply which is really needed. The frames of the panels will be made from profiles of 15 by 50 mm. The LEDs will be 5 cm apart this time. Using the punch was quite an improvement. It was still quite some work, so I decided to simplify it a bit. These are usually used to exercise. I use it to avoid exercise. A vice grip made for a nicer handle. I used the pencil to get the 45 degree angles for the corners of the frame. Initially I planned to use corner pieces to rivet everything, but then I did the math and realized I don't have enough rivets for all the panels. So I took the opportunity to try some AC aluminum tick welding. You remember the level of my welding skills? I came prepared with quite some sharpened tips. Surprisingly some of the welds worked well. But then there were the typical cases of tip dipping. <laughs> These sharp cornered butt joints are really a pain in the ass to weld. I quite often ended up melting a hole and trying to close it with a huge blob of filler again. In hindsight I should have used the corner pieces for easy lap joints. But at least I got some awesome footage, so I got that going for me. The results have been mixed, but it's nothing some grinder cosmetics wouldn't be able to solve. I sanded the sheet before riveting it to the frame to be able to apply enough pressure.
after the spray paint mess I hit from you with some editing magic last time, I decided to roll two coats of acrylic paint this time which turned out awesome. What? How oh, I could miss that until now? The four panels are connected by several 6mm bolts. I have to really step back. That's huge. Ha! Wiring next. The LEDs are the same as last time. Six sets of WS2811, each panel in series. The 5 volts from the power supply is wired using some thick speaker cables and distributed to the extra ground and 5 volt ends at each connector. To be able to interconnect the panels I also had to extend the connectors a bit. The power supply is connected directly to mains and provides three 5 volt and ground connections to handle the 70 amps. There is also a trimmer to adjust the voltage. I was a bit worried it might explode on me, but it worked really well. Wow, okay. The parts are linked in the description if you want to build something similar. I printed a case to cover the AC contacts. There will be some children jumping around at the maker fair. Better be safe. Let's assemble it now. I used some leftover profiles as stands. Since an Arduino Nano doesn't have enough memory to handle this array, I switched to the ESP32. Who would have guessed? This will provide even more cool features. This is the moment you were waiting for. It's quite nice. Since most of the libraries fail at huge arrays, I had to use my own implementation. It will be added to my ESP32 Arduino library once it's cleaned up. But for now I'm able to run some nice procedural graphics. It made quite an impression at the Maker Fair as well. I also implemented a UDP streaming mode for it and wrote a small program to play back any kind of media from your PC. Ok, the resolution is still a bit crappy, but I consider it a piece of art. Using the streaming mode over Wi-Fi, I'm even able to use one of these ESP cams to show live footage. But all this is a topic for another time. If you are interested in this, consider subscribing and ringing the bell to not miss it. Big thanks to all my supporters and I see you next time. Bye!